Let's take a look at the top left of the interface, and here we have this input knob, pretty self-explanatory, but what this determines is how loud the signal coming into Resiport actually is, right? So if I turn this down, I can zero it out. And this clip lamp will light if the input signal is too loud. Bear that in mind. Now, as I, as I alluded to earlier, there is this high-pass filter that Resicord uses to shape the sound. And you can place this, you can turn it off entirely, which is the setting that it's at now. Or you can place it before this comb filter, and that's the pre-setting. Right, here's how it sounds. Right, so it's, it's progressively filtering out more and more of the frequencies and leaving just the highest frequencies in there. And that's filtering the signal before it gets to the comb filter. Now you can also place it after the comb filter in this post setting. And in this case, the, set, the signal enters the resonators unfiltered and then it passes through the high pass on its way out. Now the comb filter section allows us to determine how the feedback behaves. The feedback is of course what creates the, the resonance effects that Resicord uses. And there are two different uh, parameters here. The first is the feedback filter and the second is feedback control. Feedback filter is a filter that's applied to the feedback itself. And there are two options that we have here. One is a low pass, which is indicated by LP, and the second is a notch. Now a notch filter is uh, also known as a band reject filter. It takes a certain portion of the frequency spectrum and, and eliminates it based on where you've set that cutoff frequency or that kind of uh, reject frequency. A low pass, of course, allows the lower frequencies to pass through based on where you've set uh, set the cutoff frequency and at the you know when you have it really close to being closed you're only you're only allowing the lowest of the low frequencies to pass through but to give you a sense for how this sounds let's come over here to level and I'm gonna turn down all of these resonators but one and then we'll just get a sense for it here and click over to filter now I'm going to switch over to low pass and just start drawing this down you'll hear the low pass effect So here when I had it down at the bottom there, it was only letting really the most percussive elements through. Now if I switch over to notch, it's going to move through the frequency spectrum as I move this bar and kick out different frequencies. So that's a somewhat more subtle effect. Now next door to that, I'm going to come over here and turn our levels back up for all the resonators. We have a few different ways of controlling the feedback in it. Brezicord needs a way to control or to keep the feedback from becoming overwhelming and creating sonic chaos. So it gives us three options. Uh, the first two of these uh, work on individual samples and they are saturating clip. And these are a soft clipping and a hard clipping uh, form of uh, control respectively. So they sound slightly different too. So this is kind of the hard clip and this is a saturation. So the saturation has a slightly warmer sound, right? Slightly less kind of cut. And sometimes you'll find that this begins to feedback a little bit. And you can just, if you ever encounter feedback with this, you can just kind of click on and off the uh, CPU on off switch. The limit is more like a, just an, anal an analog limiter. Right? So these function in slightly different ways. Um, you just have to get to know them and get to know what you like. I, I kind of prefer the saturation. It sounds a little more organic to me. This diffuse feedback section is really interesting. What it does is it takes a feedback signal and applies an all-pass filter to it. An all-pass filter apply, allows all the frequencies to pass through, but it changes the phase relationship between them. And so when you use this, you create all sorts of interesting interference effects. That sounds a little confusing, but let's get a sense for how it actually sounds. I turn this on. Now this color knob uh, allows you to, to tell Resicord where you want the all-pass filter to be, where you want the center point of that filter to be. And as I turn this, you don't hear anything right now because when the amount, the amount of diffuse feedback is set to zero or is set to this 12 o'clock position, it's not going to do anything. But once I start to make this positive, even very, even very slight changes will, will produce that feedback and the color then becomes an important control piece. And I can also bring this negative. 
Now this inverts the signal. And so you'll get really different signals on both sides. This is bipolar, right? So you have inverted and positive here. Now you want to be careful with this amount knob because as, as you've just heard, even if you turn it very slightly, it tends to produce pretty wild results. And uh, depending on where you have this color set, you can get some pretty out there feedback. But it's a lot of fun to use and it, cre it creates kind of this wall of sound vibe in the resonance effect. So if you, if you can master it, if you can, if you can shape it and get it to uh, do your bidding, it produces some really rich textures. All right, moving to the right of the diffuse feedback section is this harmonic section. And what this is, is an additional resonator stage that you can use with the six resonators down here. Now when I turn this on, you will hear the effect and you move through different pitches of additional resonation with this ratio knob, but for right now, let's just hear how it sounds. I'm gonna turn this on. When I click the on, you'll hear that we're basically about, a, we're resonating about an octave higher than the original signal. Now, as I begin to drag this ratio knob to the left, hear that pitch rising. Now, interestingly, they say in the manual that all the way left is infinitely higher than the original pitch, which is, which is kind of a uh, brain teaser. But this is kind of a useful a useful additional harmonic stage if you really want to fatten up your sound. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that some of the snapshots use this pretty strate uh, strategically. Now you'll recall that when the signal first comes into Resicord, it goes through this high pass filter. And so at the end of this, we have this refresh section which allows us to restore some of the higher frequencies that may have been cut off at the beginning of this. Uh, if we have a really dull sound, for example, we can bring this in to, to add some brightness. So I'm going to turn this all the way down to zero and then start our sound. As I raise this, it's EQing the higher frequency, bringing out the higher frequencies. More. So this is kind of this is kind of a nice way of restoring some of the brightness if uh, you end up with a dull sound after you pass the signal through the high pass filter. Now, normalize is pretty simple. All it is is a volume maximizer. So, if I click this, much louder, right? Pretty straightforward. So, this output section has a W source drop down here with three options. W source stands for wet source. And what this applies to is the wet signal, right? The process signal, where we're taking this process signal from. So, our options are mix, post, and del only. And this is a little confusing because these terms differ from what's in the manual, but I think they, at least the first two, more or less uh, parse with, with what's in the manual. So mix is taking the wet signal from the beginning of the comb filter's feedback loop. So here's what this sounds like. It's a familiar sound. I just, want to, I just want to allow you to hear the difference here. When I switch over to post, what we're doing is taking it from the end of the, of the comb filter's feedback signal, and thus the resonation effect is more prominent. So to, to listen to this, you'll hear that the resonation is, is, is slightly more present in the signal. Right. Switch back to the mix. You hear more of that dry signal with mix, right? It's more kind of punchy and percussive. Pose gives you more of that spacey, resonated sound. And then Dell only, I'm not sure what this is. I, it could be delay only. Uh, what I do know is if you crank this delay knob, you get some really spacey effects. But uh, I'm hoping to crack the case on this one, and when I do, I will be sure to, uh, to note it here. But uh, just, just bear in mind that uh, these are the different ways that you select from the wet source. And underneath here, this amp is, is the wet source amplitude, right? So it's not it's not all of the amplitude, it's just the, the wet source. So, and then below that, of course, we have a dry-wet balance. So this determines how much of the processed and the resonated signal versus the unprocessed signal we're using. So as I crank this back, this is just pure rhythm maker, right? This is a completely dry signal. As I begin to bring in the, that resonance in, about 50%. We have half and half, and of course, the edge full resonation. 
Now global pitch is, of course, slightly more familiar to most of us. It has a coarse and fine pitch adjustment, and these move in semitones. So if I get my uh, sequence playing here, I can move this up or down within a range, I believe, of plus or minus four octaves. And then there's a fine pitch adjustment, which is changing the uh, changing the pitch in smaller increments. Now PB is pitch bend. This is the pitch bend range. So if I'm playing with a MIDI keyboard, I can use my my pitch bend to move between that in that range, or I can I can change this up and move kind of a smaller range. This NP exclamation mark, when clicked on, will make MIDI keys C60 to C96 control pitch shift. So if you're playing. just allows you to do a global pitch shift using a MIDI keyboard. Now the envelope follower essentially takes a snapshot of the amplitude envelope as the signal comes into Resacord, and then it allows other parameters to be shaped in the same way, right? It's basically following the envelope. It's saying, okay, how about we tell the, the filter cutoff and the color part of this diffuse feedback to kind of emulate the amplitude envelope in a way. And so if you're familiar with envelope followers, you're probably familiar with these hold and release times. This is the hold and release of the follower itself. And so I can kind of change these to make those times longer or shorter as I choose. The really interesting part here is as we move to the right, because we have the three modulation destinations. The first is feedback, right? It's the comb filter feedback. We can modulate that based on the amplitude envelope. So if I click this up, kind of a cool gated effect because what it's doing is it's telling the feedback to behave the same way that the amplitude envelope behaves, right? With an attack, the case, sustain, release. So it really, you really only hear it during the stage where it, the, you're at full amplitude. And as you clip, really crank this up, it only just barely peaked, that resonated signal just barely peeks through there. Now notice, this is a unipolar control. So this is not positive and negative modulation. This is basically no modulation on the left to full modulation on the right. In contrast, however, uh, cutoff and color, and cutoff applies to the filter cutoff of the uh, comb filter, and color applies to the color setting of diffuse feedback. These are bipolar controls. So what I'm saying here is I want to negatively or positively modulate the filter cutoff using the amplitude envelope that we followed. Hopefully that's not too much to take in, but here's how it sounds. So if we uh, crank this feedback down to zero. So this is the negative modulation. So you have this interesting effect where the filter is opening kind of in the opposite way, in an inverted way. Now we crank this to the right. The filter is opening in, in uh, kind of lockstep with the amplitude envelope. Now in the middle, there's no modulation for both these bipolar controls. Color is a little more subtle, I found. This is this is modulating the color control, which you'll recall is the center point of the all-pass filter that the diffuse feedback uh, section uses. So I haven't had a tremendous effect with this, but of course I need to dial in some some amount for this diffuse feedback to this to work. and then probably turn it on too is a good idea, right guys? So we do get some effect there. Negative modulation of color. It's kind of a cool fade-in effect. Positive. So again, something to, something to play around with. Uh, the color, of course, is in the amount. These, these are pretty powerful, so you want to maybe be more judicious than I've been and make uh, kind of smaller increment adjustments. But this is a really cool way of, of getting everything to kind of lock in together, right? Because what you're saying is that everything is going to conform to the amplitude envelope as the signal enters Resicord. Okay, I make no secret about the fact that the LFO is my favorite part of this ensemble. You can produce some really cool effects with it, uh, but let's just get into what it is straight at the beginning. 
We have an LFO rate, which of course is the rate that the waveform is going to use to modulate the destination. Now I'm going to turn up this master LFO over here so we can really hear this. When you get to the right, it really starts to wig out there. But if I drop this rate, it becomes much slower, right? Crank it up. Now width determines the symmetry of the LFO waveform. And this is very useful, as we'll see later on, for producing effects, but... Crank it all the way right. So we're moving between these different waveforms. Now, delay modulates the resonator's delay time. It's effectively, it's a vibrato effect. Um, and it's pretty out there. I really love that. Ratio is an interesting uh, extra tweak for this because ratio allows us to, and I'm just going to reset this snapshot so we get a clean look at this. It allows us to modulate the harmonic section's ratio control with this, uh, this ratio knob here. So if I have the harmonics activated, you can hear that as I crank this up, It's modulating the ratio of uh, the harmonic section, which, as we discussed before, is kind of this additional resonator stage. This works especially well, I find, with some of the kind of darker textures. But it's an interesting take on your traditional LFO. Okay, so now we've covered, we've covered all of these controls and uh, kind of gotten into using, using this and moving between chords. Now I want to show you just some some individual applications that I've come up with that I think are kind of cool and inspiring. It'll get you thinking about how to use this in your own tunes.